Hello everyone, welcome to the chat. Please come on in and we are so excited to have a special guest for you all. We have Phil Hawkins, the writer and director of Star Wars Origins. Hello, I'm so excited to be here guys. Welcome <laughs> Phil. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to clap yeah. too much because I didn't want to cause a problem with their mic, but yeah. Um, I'm so, yeah, I just apologize for my voice um, at the moment. I don't usually sound this crackly or husky. It's just been, it's been a lot of talking, a lot of late nights, and uh, <laughs> a lot of strain on my voice. So Aww. apologies, but I, did, I, didn't, I didn't want to miss this. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you so much for taking out the time to talk to us and uh, discuss this beautiful film. We're, we're uh, really no, excited. <laughs> very, very excited. And you are all the way in London right now, correct? Uh, yeah. So even it's further almost away, midnight. I mean, so. Yes, yes, it's quite late. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> but I've, been, I've been trying to rest my voice the past few hours. Um, to uh to kind of prepare for this so uh but thank you and hello everyone in the chat it's really fun to do this live usually I'd sort of do podcasts and things so this is a new experience for me so um so hi yes we will we will keep this short and sweet uh as well due to your voice so you can rest up because this this beautiful fan film which you let emerson and i see earlier okay. this week before it's it's u.s premiere yeah uh, that drops tomorrow here in the u.s so so we were so excited to watch it early and when you when you contacted us uh it was just it was just an honor to be for you to do that it felt felt awesome well, like we were in a little inside track <laughs> well, you, 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 i think you saw it before well you definitely saw it before some of the cast so um Ooh, wow. i feel even more important <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah because uh you know you guys are wonderful um you know with your reaction to the trailer and uh and uh pushing that um you know to uh your guys who are probably in the the chat now so um that was that was wonderful so you know it's kind of um nice to uh because yeah I, i'm a fan you know we've all made this as fans and this is for the fans you know yeah. it's free you know it's 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 for you guys to hopefully watch and hopefully enjoy um and um and something a little bit different to kind of the usual sort of fan film kind of fair the kind of you know the more stereotypical fan film is quite different from that um if you would agree, <laughs> having right. now seen it, yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So no, I had to share it with you guys. I had to share it with you. You know, it's uh, it's wonderful um, to kind of. Um, we were just saying just for the live stream, um, it started that there's you know some really fun twists and turns that I've not been able to talk about. Yeah, uh, it feels like a, it's like I'm doing some official. Uh, Star Wars uh, thing when they can't talk about spoilers or anything. I feel like I've been the same. Yeah. <laughs> I've had to keep the secrets for so long. Uh, so it's kind of fun to talk to people outside of the filmmakers, you know, outside of people that read the script to kind of, oh, when did you spot that? And when did this happen? And how did you feel about that? You know, so right. um, that's what I'm really excited for, you know, tomorrow when it goes live. Um, it's, um, it's seven o'clock GMT. So um wherever that wherever you are in terms of time zones but usually that's kind of mid-afternoon lunchtime ish in the states uh, well, it'll, it'll be about 1 p.m central time probably yeah. 2 p.m eastern here in the states that it'll drop so yeah it'll be uh late morning mid-afternoon in yeah. the united states for everyone and yeah. i'm excited so, i'm excited yeah, to be... dive dive into this a little bit but with more general questions because obviously em and i've seen it and we can't we don't want to spoil anything but uh yeah <laughs> let's dive into some of these questions so cool, okay. first yeah. we have a, a trailer to watch so let's go ahead yes. and air the trailer and get everyone on the same page of visually um this is the movie that that we are discussing and going more into depth with so you'll hear um 
just for a warning for our <laughs> audience, you'll hear about a couple seconds of black screen and silence. Has been too long out here in the sand as slaves to secrets long forgotten. No longer. What is happening? These wars. The terror of fight for different versions of gods. It's all change everything. We're not alone out there. Let's end the war. These secrets do not belong to you. I have to say that trailer is dope. Yes. <laughs> and that is the technical term for it. It is. It is the technical term. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's a good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a it's a fun thing to watch, and and especially when people hear fan film, I think they're expecting a certain type of film. But the fact that we've kind of taken Star Wars and 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 uh, kind of mashed it up with Indiana Jones and set on Earth. Um, with kind of original characters, um, it's uh, it, it's fun. It's, it, it, I think it's going to be a really fun ride for you guys to uh, go on when you uh, when you watch the film. Yeah, I will say the trailer itself delighted my child, <laughs> the child within, because <laughs> yes. um, in my household we watched Star Wars and we watched Indiana Jones on a loop. Um, I, my dad and I can basically quote the last crusade to, to each other. <laughs> Same. So, uh, just, just finding all the references that you made in a, it's a, it's about a 25 minute long film, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All of the references that you were able to, um, to pack in there was just so much fun going oh that's from raiders oh that's from the last jedi or or the last crusade oh that's from uh, the uh, the phantom menace it's just it was a lot of fun as a fan of both of these franchises to see so Hi. you can obviously see the influence of george lucas so how did george lucas um influence you as a, a film maker and film director it's, um, I mean, you know, it's sort of that, that story a lot of filmmakers, probably of my generation, say is that, you know, they saw Star Wars as a kid, they saw Jurassic Park, they, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a child of the, you know, my early childhood was like the 90s blockbusters, so, yeah, I remember watching Jurassic Park, um, for example, and like jumping on my auntie's knee in the theatre because I was absolutely petrified, but yeah. also, also fascinated by 
you know, I had an awareness like um, I know it's not real, um, uh, but, you know, that fascination of how do these people create these worlds that I'm drawn into, um, as I say, I became a little bit obsessed with um, and started making my own films to kind of understand how they did it. Um, and then with, with Star Wars and George Lucas, I mean, I have sort of two answers uh, <laughs> to this. There's, there's, uh, there's the answer like uh, the, the, the 12 year old me. And then there's kind of the maybe the kind of retrospective look. Uh, yeah. If you ask the 12 year old me, it's like, oh, my God, there's lightsabers and <laughs> spaceships and it's so cool. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and the whole fast, I, I was really obsessed with the, with the, um, you know, the, the blue letters that appear on screen a long time yes. ago in the galaxy far, far away. Um, cause like, wait, ha, cause I, I you know, I, my, my films are, I mean, I, I'm 34 or 35 this month. Um, so my films really were the, were the prequels, you know, yeah. um, uh, that I went to the cinema to see. So, you know, the, the OT, I was, uh, it was on, you know, on VHS um, that I saw them. The best um, way to view them, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But, but there was something about the VHS nature of them. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that Lucas did something wonderful, which has made them feel old and tired and dirty, you know, um, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it, it made them feel like period films because, when you see them in the early 90s, which is when I first saw them, they already felt old. They felt like old films, mm-hmm. but then old films with futuristic stuff yes. you know, felt, was fascinating. And it felt like, oh, these are kind of almost old, slightly documentary kind of things. You know, it's yeah. kind of fun. Um, you know, but I think in hindsight, when I look back on it, I think what really drew, drew me in and captured... Um, my imagination was was Luke, and you know, I have been one of those weird kids that has always wanted to be a filmmaker. I don't know where it came from, um, <laughs> but I've always made films, and you know, from like ten years old, you know. Um, uh, but no, you know, where I grew up, and um, you know, none of my family are in the film industry. You know, where I grew up is you know is 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 far and away from from uh, mm-hmm. close to the film industry. Um, so I think, you know, the reason why it did um, grab me was that Luke was, you know, this farm boy from kind of nothing um, who, you know, had a dream to leave his planet and do something special, do something with his life, you know, do something um, that, you know, spoke to people. And, uh, and, and sort of now I can kind of see, like, and again, this might be a, a, an adult retrospective on it, but like... The, you know, the more I watch the films, the more I get out of them about actually, I think maybe that's what drew me in as well, because I saw um, the hope he had to kind of get away and get away from it all, you know, um, and uh, and it, it kind of inspired me to, to carry on this kind of crazy quest to become a filmmaker, you know, so... Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that so that's um, so that's my two two reasons on uh, you know on, on a new hope basically um, about uh, yeah how, how George and obviously Raiders um, uh, and uh, you know the kind of Amblin Spielberg action adventure movies mm-hmm. um, you know Back to the Future and you know, all, all these movies that you know I love and enjoy and if I'm ever got 15 minutes you know spare i will just stick one of them on and watch a bit of it um and try not to be drawn in and watch the rest of it <laughs> um, right, right. you know um, but um it's uh, you know th- th- there's something about these films that is pure escapism um and i love that about cinema and those are exactly the kind of movies that i want to make and continue making um is uh you know uh, is to reach people and a wide audience with you know a sort of escapism uh, entertainment, especially in in um, in in today's day and age <laughs> of yeah. whatever's going on in the world, you can always stick in a new hope and make yourself feel better. Yeah, <laughs> amen. Definitely. <laughs> amen. So, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, yeah, that's kind of where it came from. So funnily enough, it's sort of. Uh, you know, my first films as a kid were fan films, really. I made I made a spoof of, 
the Phantom Menace in my high school. I made a Matrix film. I made an X Files film. You know, um, so it's funny that now, sort of thirteen years into directing you know, professionally, that I sort of come back to making a fan film. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of strange, albeit on a very different budget, a very different scale. But um, you know, the whole fan film and my love of Star Wars and those kind of films has has sort of drawn me back in uh, to to want to make a film. You know, like Origins. Most definitely. Um, I, I Jamie Costa is in this movie, and, and of course he's a very uh, beloved figure in this community. How did uh, Jamie Costa become involved in Star Wars Origins? Uh, well, I mean, I, you know, I'm a fan of Jamie's as, as much as everybody is, and as you say, he's kind of important to the community. And, and, and um, I, um, you know, I, I was looking for that character that sort of indiana jones yes. type yeah um and um but i thought you know um bar whole kind of budget you know reasons of financial cost of bringing someone over from the states and that kind of thing like i didn't even know whether he'd be interested in making um you know a fan film and i was sort of toying with um approaching him about it because i hadn't i didn't know him before this i didn't i'd not work with him uh, and i was at um I'm a strong believer in fate, you know, <laughs> yes. um, and uh, and sometimes fate, you know, um, deals you a hand that you just have to grab and take. And so I was at Star Wars Celebration Chicago, um, and uh, I was uh, just in our apartment waiting to go out to dinner, and Jamie's trailer dropped for um, uh, his uh, for Kenobi, yeah. um, the uh, Kickstarter uh, trailer. And I thought, oh, well, he probably definitely doesn't want to do it now. <laughs> <'Cause>, um, <laughs> he's, got, he's a little you know, busy. He's, he's doing his own thing. So I, went, I go out to dinner, um, and uh, we're just sat in this bar waiting for, our, you know, uh, Chicago deep pan pizza. Um, and uh, <laughs> and I get to, as you do, I love celebration. You just talk, to, everyone's there for the con, so you just get talking. And the guy that sat next to me, was uh, one of Jamie Costa's old friends from high school. Oh, um, and, I, and I was like, right, okay, this is, th- like, what are the chances? Yeah. Like, his trailer just dropped. I've come to this bar, and now the first person I've talked to is you. Like, this is fate telling me to, um, you know, to approach him. So I just dropped him an email. I'd sent him the script. I'd previewed the whole film, so you could basically click a button and you could watch a very crude kind of, you know, animated version of it. Um, and yeah, he just got back in touch instantly um, and uh, said, you know, yeah, let's talk. This sound, this sounds great. And uh, I think it's also because um, I, you know, Jamie's very known and obviously awesome at his uh, impressions and uh, embodying these amazing characters like Robin Williams and obviously Han Solo and, and, and people like this. But I didn't want that. I didn't want a um, caricature or mm-hmm. I didn't want, uh, you know, him. I wanted him to play him. And, of course, we could we could sprinkle little bits of Harrison Ford or, you know, little little hints as an Easter egg. But, yeah. um, but I didn't want him to just play that character. So I think that's what excited him as well. It's like it was the opportunity for him to be him as an actor yeah, and not yeah. someone playing somebody you know um but yeah it was great you know um and uh it um uh, and obviously on set he was always cracking into different um <laughs> different voices and different people please uh, tell me he did gandalf uh, he, he did some gandalf yes uh, yeah he's uh <laughs> he's i think the best one is um uh hearing my script as read by Matthew McConaughey is a very, <laughs> is a very interesting uh, perspective. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, he's, he's, he's a wonderful guy. He's got great energy. He's got great spirit. And especially, you know, on uh, how tough the shoot was uh, in the heat and the conditions and the mm-hmm. sickness and all this kind of stuff that was going on. Uh, he was definitely, and he was ill himself. You know, he was ill. Uh, while shooting, um, oh, and, isn't that how uh, it always works out? Too. Yeah, yeah, 
I know. So you go all that way, and that's uh, that's what happens. <laughs> we now, have a, oh, we so, have a super chat. Yes. Um, from one of our moderators, FN1189. Thank you so much. The question is for you, Phil. Do you remember a fan film called The Empire Strikes Backyard? Very funny, very British. It has a musical number with Palpatine that almost seems like it could be the ending for Tross. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't actually. That sounds that sounds great. Is that on is that on YouTube? Like is there a is there a way of seeing that? Like no. FN, but... post the thank you so much for the super chat. Uh thank post you, the yeah. link in the chat. Well, you know, well, you're a um, mod, so you can let the link through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me, uh, yeah. St- stick it in there. Let, 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 let's have a look. That, that sounds that sounds brilliant. So, what? Well, yeah. What about this musical number? Makes you think it's the ending? No, no spoilers. It wouldn't <laughs> be great if Heavy Babes just uh, breaks into song. You know, <laughs> oh be great. Hello, my baby. Hello, my That's darling. That's the healing yeah. of Star Wars. But, but no, it needs. could be a really romantic ballad to the theme of Star Wars, <laughs> or to Ray's theme. You know. And they, then they could look at each other in the eyes and then slowly walk towards each other, you know, and, you know, we'll see where the song takes us. They could break into song. It could be, you know, could be a very interesting take. Hey, if people didn't like The Last Jedi, they're certainly not going to see the like a musical. As Ryan Johnson's going, I'm off the hook. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. JJ's, uh, JJ's lost it. He's uh, yeah. an old musical. Everyone thought uh, I lost my mind. Nope. <laughs> Wow. Oh my god, there's so many episodes. Thanks for the link. There's so many episodes. This looks well, the one know what I'm doing tonight. Um <laughs> watch this. Thank you for that. That's uh, that looks uh that looks great. So, um where did you shoot this film? So this was shot um in, in the Sahara Desert in Morocco, um wow. in, uh, in July this year. So uh, not only did I shoot in the Sahara, I also sh- chose the summer. <laughs> um, wow. just because why tough. not <laughs> yeah no, you know, if you're gonna do it you're gonna do it aren't you but i um you know i did toy originally with um you know with um uh you know trying to cheat it you know maybe there's a quarry somewhere or maybe there was kind of some dunes and a beach mm-hmm. uh, but it just didn't have the scale it needed you know it didn't it, and it didn't have that look and aesthetic and obviously if i tried to shoot over here we don't have the light, you know, we don't, we don't have the sun <laughs> very often. Right. Uh, so it really would have affected the quality of the film. So um, that was a kind of short lived idea. Um, and uh, then I started, I, I, I actually went to um, Spain, the Tabernas Desert, where they shot uh, one of the Indiana Jones films. And oh, uh, I kind wow. of, and I found the exact locations and, um, and, um, you know, the whole, you know, the cliff that Indy, uh, they think Indy's fallen over and, yeah. you know, looking over and then he appears behind him. Like that cliff, I stood on that cliff and thought, this is really cool. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Uh, I did uh, on my uh, YouTube channel, I did a um, whole video uh, about it. So you can right. kind of, I can go back and uh, in, uh, go in the footsteps of kind of Spielberg. Um, but yeah, the... Um, I thought, well, maybe it might be fun to shoot in the same place they shot Indiana Jones, and that's a kind of a, a whole Easter egg in itself. Um, but uh, you know, you need sand. You know, you need you, you, know, got you You've got to have it. You've got to have that whole Tatooine, you know, kind of look to it. Yeah. Uh, and the opening shot of the film really sets that up. You know, it kind of, hopefully, it's kind of a uh, there's like a cool kind of one shot. Um, I won't spoil for you, but it, it, it's to kind of develop you into this world. So, you know, it starts and you think we might be one place and then we might be another place and then we think this character might be someone else. And then, you know, uh, and it kind of develops and, and kind of draws you in. So and you, you couldn't have done that anywhere else other than the actual Sahara Desert. So, um, so yeah, pretty tough. Shooting in 50-degree heat, that's Celsius. So I don't yeah. know what Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, it's a little and, steamy. It's a, little, yeah. it's a little hot. A little, hot. Yeah. <laughs> a little coarse. It, um, <laughs> yeah. It's funny after shooting because you're ex- you know, out exposed in the desert. You you know at the end of the day when it cool slightly, I think it would get to like thirty six degrees, 
And I remember sitting on a sand dune thinking, oh, I'm cold, this is wonderful. <laughs> um, and, uh, and and obviously that isn't cold at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was interesting, and uh, and I I, I didn't get sick um, during the shoot, but I got sick afterwards. I brought a, a bit of a nasty bug back, so um, oh. uh, oh, this is what my voice is. Don't worry, I'm I'm fine. This is just from <laughs> from talking Not and much uh, talking, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, but you know, we lost um, pretty much all of the crew uh, to sickness. Um, and, uh, some, uh, but because everyone was so motivated what they're doing, everyone, you know, people didn't want to let me down, which was wonderful. Aww. Um, and they didn't want to let the story down, you know, like our, our drone guys, uh, Neil and Odin, uh, I found out later that one night before the shoot, they found a clinic. Um, and we use the word clinic in inverted commas because we are in the desert, you know, <laughs> And, and they they got hooked up to IV drips to rehydrate so they could be so they could make it to set the next day, oh. you know like this is it, like it's just craziness the dedication of my crew, uh, you know to shoot this to shoot this film, and and it, and it, it's been made with a lot of love and a lot of passion and and, and I hope that comes across when you when you see it. Yeah, um, that's exactly what I was going to say that you can tell the. The aesthetics alone, and, and we talked about this before we went live, the aesthetics alone, the cinematography, and the music. So story aside, this whole film was a visual stunner. Mm. Absolutely, positively, visually, and musically. I love the, the score for this as well. But Thank you. But it is just, it felt nostalgic. There is the... The one scene, and I, I don't want to uh, give anything away, but there's one moment where all I'm going to say is there's a rumble and the sand <laughs> moves. Yeah, and yeah. when there's that rumble and it's and it's this kind of like shock wave and you you feel that. I, I mean, I had surround sound, so I f- literally felt it oh, happen. Um, and I just went, whoa. <laughs> 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 I love I loved it. I mean, and at work, I was watching it on my phone, so I didn't get that same effect, even though I thought it was dope. I was yeah. watching it at home, and I'm just like, oh yes, yeah, like I mean, the the visual it. effects for this film and yeah. were were phenomenal, and uh, just so many people, including yourself, Phil, just the time and the effort and the the abilities put into this was. It was palpable. You could just feel that, and it was such a, a joy to watch. Um, oh, thank you. I mean, the story the, uh, as well, but but <laughs> visually, it was such a stunner. The uh, it, I mean, it's, you know, we're in we're, we're definitely three years, maybe approaching four years making this film. Wow. Um, so um, yeah, it's been a long time coming, <laughs> um, and uh, it's so fun to be able to you know, to like less than 24 hours, this will be out there. And, and yeah. uh, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, uh, considering how long it's been in my head and, and, you know, the, the, the wonderful people I had working on the film, both shooting and uh, in post-production, uh, I mean, the visual effects, they were done by a company called Flipbook, um, they're based in the North of England in, in, a, in Manchester. And, um, they're you know they're huge Star Wars fans and uh, it, it's funny like I'm 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 a perfectionist right like I am but I know when to experience has told me when to stop you know when to go no mm-hmm. what I'm doing now nobody will see um, and funny enough the version you guys saw you know a, a week ago or so has changed. <laughs> um, some of the effects have been slightly redone. Some things have been tweaked, you know, mm-hmm. so we've been, we've been working to the bone. Um, actually, as I'm talking, I'm uploading the film to YouTube, like, right now. Wow. So, like, this is, like, officially, like, the end. <laughs> <All Very real. laughs> uh, so, um, so, yeah, because uh, my visual effects guys, um, it, you know, we... we um, he saw it and 
we had this kind of public um, premiere at a convention in England last weekend, and we sat and watched the film. And I said, you know, look, I think there's two shots uh, I'd like to fix, you know, before it hits YouTube, just because, you know, they weren't quite right. I feel like they needed a little bit more time, you know, to finesse them. And then my vision effects supervisor said, two? I've got a list of 12. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and uh, so, they, they, so they've been tweaking to perfection because their fans, you know, as, you, as you've seen and, and you all see, there's some very big stuff yeah. in the film. Oh, yeah. Uh, that the trailer doesn't even hint at. And I love that about that because it'd be very easy for us to put those shots in the trailer and then the trailer will probably be on a gazillion, gazillion views right now because it looks crazy. Um, and uh, but then you spoil the story, you know. And for me, yeah. the story is everything, and the experience mm-hmm. of watching this, um, you know, spoiler free, um, because it, because it is unusual, it is a slightly different fan film. Hopefully, you know, it'll, it'll draw you in, um, take on this ride, and uh, and it's sort of designed that the longer you watch, the kind of more you're rewarded. Um, yes. Uh, and, and again, yeah. I, I mean, I'm the same on YouTube, right? Like, I'm, you know, you start watching something, and there's always something else to do. There's always something else to click on. There's all, you know, it's, there's this drug. There's this like clickbaity uh, view. So it's got to grab people. Um, but then, if you think um, about the classic pacing of Indiana Jones and you know and Star Wars. They're slow films, you know, compared to modern uh, filmmaking techniques. So what I didn't want to do is um, make something that was too um, gimmicky uh, from the off just to grab people's attention Um, because, uh, (laughs) uh, Amy, that's wonderful. (laughs) Um, I just saw in the the chat. Um, Thank you for the super (laughs) chat, Amy. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I am, uh, hopefully. <laughs> um, but um, uh, but yeah, so it's... Uh, it, oh, sorry, I've lost my train of thought where I was. Um, I've lost a train of thought. This is why I don't do things live. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, you know, it, it's... Uh, and, and, and the music, of course, um, you know, it needed to be sort of John Williams, but not be John Williams, yeah. you know, kind of... Oh. have its own themes and own identity um, and, uh, you know, and, and do something bold and interesting that hopefully you can hum some of the themes when you come, you know, after a couple of watches. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everyone's really pulled together and, and again, because we're all just crazy Star Wars fans. Like, who else? Um, <laughs> just laughing at Amy, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I didn't, um, uh, I didn't, you know, I, 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 you know, I, in so many years and so much time and energy and passion has gone to it that only something like Star Wars can draw those people in, you know, and, mm-hmm. and get spent this time doing it. And, and, uh, I'm going to be forever grateful to the people that did that because they certainly didn't do it for money. Uh, <laughs> so, um, um, so yeah, I, I do hope you guys dig it when you, you know, when you get to see it uh, tomorrow. It oozed nostalgia, <laughs> which is yeah, what I, like, which I loved about it. Because again, like you said, after every turn, something happened, and you're like, oh, that, you know, like we were saying before, that that's from Crusade, that's from Raiders, yeah. that's from this, that's from that, and and a certain a something when when someone pushes a certain someone and that certain someone <laughs> does that thing, I went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be in there. Um, oh, I got at least once. And yeah. uh, I don't want to spoil it, it for anyone. <laughs> no, but even, the, um, even in the sound mix, you know, my mixer, you know, um, bar the obvious stuff, like, I mean, you see the trailer, you know there's a lightsaber in it, bar yeah. using the original sounds for the lightsaber and stuff, even in the mix, um, in the sound effects and the foley, they've there's hidden Easter eggs in the sound of things. Um, so if you um, uh, go back and watch that moment we we're talking about earlier with the 
the the the shock wave yeah. and if you have a nice closer listen to what that sound is you will hear a very familiar roar from a very familiar character oh. um, <laughs> um nice. so there's a lot of fun as well um in there for the fans um and uh, that was a lot of fun figuring out where those things could go and a lot but in a way that still served the story. I didn't want it to be gimmicky right. too much. You know? I, I, I just wanted nods and intrigue and to play with this idea of these two worlds kind of colliding of Indiana Jones and Star Wars um, and, uh, and the fun you can have with that. Um, yeah, there's a certain bit um, where, you know, our kind of, in inverted commas, Indiana Jones character leaves some things behind on a table um mm-hmm. and you know if you look at that you think oh god if only you kept those things not the other things you would have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you would live forever and know everything basically um <laughs> so, right uh, right oh my god so yeah. yeah there's a lot of fun with that for the fans as well um but i, I you know it's um it, you know it, it, there are a lot of visual effects obviously in the film and the, you know there's some huge sequences but I really wanted you to really care about these characters because um, I think I think a lot of short film or fan film can get caught up in the effects yeah. and we can forget about the story um, and we can forget about keeping people's attention because um, as much as how great a visual effect is, you know, and, and I'm not talking about short films, talking about modern movies, you know, if you don't care about the people in those effects, then what's the point? Right. Um, so hopefully this film will will um, draw you in uh, to these characters and their story, um, and uh, uh, you know, and, and, and do it that way. So then, then the visual effects are a nice reward for that. <laughs> the wonderful actress who played Ellie, and I am, and I apologize, I'm blanking on her name. Uh, yeah. Oh, could you say that again? Everett. Yes. She was phenomenal. I I loved her and I and I know we we gushed about Jamie earlier, but she uh I I loved her as this uh, this character. And that, that means so much coming for you guys. Um, she she you know. um especially uh at the the tail end where she um Things happen. Things happen. <laughs> Stuff and things happen, and um, this, that, and the other thing. But she, she was, she's ferocious, yeah. and she did, she did not back down. And of course, at the end, it just it it got me. Um, it got me, and I'm not going to say anymore. But uh, it it was it I'm was so it was especially it was, you guys saying that because, um, you know. <laughs> It, it, it was import, important to me to have a, you know, a strong female character um, at the heart of the film. And that's, you know, from a story perspective, as well as, you know, um, it's it not just being Indiana Jones, you know. Right. Um, and, uh, and I feel that it's directorially, and, you know, Marie's so wonderful at being strong but showing... Yes. Um, fragility, but yes. also, you yes. know, and I, th- I feel like at the moment, um, with the whole Mary Sue thing and the whole all that mm. crap that happens, you know, it's sort of like, you, you know, is is not you can't just have her kick ass, right? Because, you know, she's not she's not Lara Croft, right? You know, right? She, she, she can't just suddenly kick into action gear. You know, just because the story demands it, you know. And also, there are things happen to her and in front of her and around her that she needs to react to it as the character and, and, and not just because she's now this archetypal action hero. And, and, and if that means she needs to shed a tear, then she needs to, you know. And that doesn't make her a weak character, you know, just because she's showing emotion, you yeah. know, and... Um, and I feel that that is, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say that about a guy, you know, for example. Right. Um, so, you know, it, that, that's a, 
that's a balance that hopefully that we got right and we you know we did talk about that a lot and on set we um you know we played with a few different things but marie just got it and and uh, understood this character and really really lifted it beyond what i could have had on the page you know um and uh she's got real presence you know my my reference to her was like i really wanted like sort of heady lamar you know, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. that, that was yeah. that, that's kind of when it was casting, that was like my my reference, you know, um, and uh, and, you know, and uh, I think Marie uh, embodies and encapsulates a lot of that kind of um, modern heroine with the classical heroine, you know, um, and um and as again, like for you guys to say that that you liked her and and her character and the performance means a lot because I know you guys talk a lot about this stuff <laughs> and uh, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, so that's so I can relax now. I'm like, hey, girls with sabers liked it, so you know, <laughs> every, everyone else can screw off because you know. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> but I and obviously we in the trailer we see her holding a lightsaber. Mm-hmm. That whole sequence, for me, there's a lot more that gets wrapped up in that, was was one of my favorites of this film. That whole sequence, it was, it was so strong. And obviously, I can't say mm. much more about it, but we see her holding a lightsaber mm. uh, in the trailer. So yeah. that yeah. much is, it has been seen. Mm. It's so... She, oh, I, I loved it. I actually Thank loved you. that part and what she Thank says you. in that scene. Um, I just, I just love it. Yeah, it was a good. It was a oh, that whole sequence was so, so good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye, Maria. Maria's going. Bye, Maria. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> much for your kind words. I might scroll for the bit and see if I've missed anything. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. I get well. That was one of the moments I was talking, you know, talking about like just because you've got a lightsaber doesn't make you badass, you know. Right. Um, so how do you? Where's the balance in that? Mm-hmm. That where you can deliver something for the audience because obviously there's, there's an expectation, you know, um, but also again not lose the character. So the choreography of that um, was, um, you know, I, I would say it's difficult because. I, you know, for me, that was one of the most important parts of the film, you know, if not the most important part of the film. Um, so I'd thought about it a lot and knew exactly the tone of it and, and how she should do it and the choreography of it. And, you know, um, and uh, and it's also an, a kind of nod to Ray, you know. Yes. Uh, there's certain things that um, Ray does that she doesn't know what she's doing, you know. Um that's how I felt about Marie when mm-hmm. she was holding it, mm-hmm. that some of it was it's natural, a, you know, but then all of a sudden afterwards it was like, what am I doing? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I like that, that because it's like, we all think, oh yeah, I'd hold a lightsaber this way. But, you yeah. know, once you get it in your hands and are are doing things, it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very much right. a callback it's to funny, the actually, Killer I, base. Yeah. One of my most favorite moments in shooting was um uh oh no actually I can't say that's just, oh I almost spoiled something. Oh god. Oh. Uh, the, the, we did we tried to do a lot in camera and there's some practical effects um that I got to experience and it made me feel like a kid uh uh because um it just felt like it was real for a moment and that's yeah. all I can say. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, Exactly. But, um, but yeah, that was uh, that was that was really good fun. Um, I'm glad that I'm glad that moment uh, works for you guys because um, that's uh, you know as I say that's one of my favorite favorite uh, moments. Yeah, I'm sorry I need to tease, but I don't want to spoil it. You know, <laughs> I know it's enjoy. it's really one of the the <laughs> the best sequences of the film, in my opinion. That that whole sequence and and some of it happens really fast. So you're like. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> That's so much fun. Yeah. Well, so much fun. We have a few uh, viewer questions of people yeah. uh, that sent in that want to have your opinion on right. 
the sequel trilogy uh, and the OT. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, just saying, uh oh, this is where uh, <laughs> I have a. I had the lose fans or game fans. It was doing so, it was doing so well. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's okay. We're, we're not going to ask you anything that will put you on the spot. <laughs> Just fan enjoyment. It's all good. Yep. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, Ella Lisa on Twitter asked you, what do you think is the main theme to, for you as you experience the Star Wars movies? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think maybe just, I think actually sort of goes back to what I was mentioning earlier about um, uh, the hope, you know, um, that it has and um, this idea of, of, of family and family being tricky and but important and grounding and you know, all these kinds of things. Um, but I think, you know, when I think um, the, uh, I think about what it means to me, so it goes back to what I said before about the, I find it very inspirational because um, it, uh, it, it <laughs> how do I get, this is why I don't like midichlorians. Okay. <laughs> uh, because the, for me, the force is, everywhere it's around us it you know penetrates mm-hmm. us oh you know the usual stuff um and that hope and wonder and the, the 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 idea that we're all connected um is it, it sort of goes back to that power of you know when, when you know when we first walked on the moon you know and there's that photograph of of you know from the moon looking back at earth mm-hmm. and how small we are and how pathetic we are um and there's all this squabbling and horrors and war and all this stuff that happens, um, and um, on this little planet. And it's it's and obviously you know it's caused Star Wars. There is a there is dark and light in the Star Wars universe. But it, it, I love that feeling, that idea that we aren't alone and there is something else out there. And, and maybe if we just look beyond ourselves. Um, to a galaxy far, far away, that that you know maybe make us better people. Um, maybe this is the gone midnight uh, in, in my time zone of me talking. But uh, does that make sense? You that know, I, I just think it's. Sense. Uh, um, that makes sense. I think there's something really interesting uh, about that, and um, a real farm boy says, you know, fa- found family. And you're right, you know, this kind of amazing family. Um, that's pulled together of the kind of unlikely heroes, you know, you think, you know, you think like Han Solo and Luke and Leia and a robot, you know, like they, <laughs> they wouldn't necessarily hang out all the time. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, so uh, I think that's, um, I think, I think that's wonderful. And when I think about, um, you know, I'm, um, yeah, I, I, I'm one of five in my family, my brothers and sisters, um, and, um, and they're obviously close to, but I, I have this extent, I have my film family, you know, and these are yeah. people from all walks of life, um, you know, from different parts of the country, different parts of the world that have become, you know, close friends, and we're sort of this found family kind of making this film, <laughs> Um and uh, uh, and that, that that's obviously important too. Um, I hope that answered the question. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it is it is amazing how much uh, how 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 much important community is to Star Wars. Not just the the family within the Star Wars movies, but the the found family you have within the community of going mm-hmm. to this like celebration or. Or meeting someone that has seen the movies and you instantly connect like Luthien and I did. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just, like we found each other it, on social media because we loved Star Wars. So it's just like yeah. it's a found family in the fantasy, in the myth itself, and then in the fan community. So, yes, I love that. I love that theme. It's wonderful. <laughs> I mean, my wife actually... Um, I uh, you know, we launched a film at um, a convention called For the Love of Sci-Fi, and um, that's a, a more general sci-fi convention, but obviously a big part of it. Star Wars, and you know Warwick Davis was there, and uh, and you know a, a bunch of other actors, um, and 
I took my little twins who are, oh. you know, uh, 50 months old. And they were dressed up as, uh, if you look at my Instagram, dressed up as Han Solo. Because my, my son's called Harrison. Um, oh. and, uh, my Still, daughter, I lost myself when you posted I, that picture on Instagram. I I'm just like, oh my God, that's throwing me back to so many Halloweens with my twin sister. I can't even deal. Uh, it's so funny. And I, I dressed my little daughter as Chewbacca. Oh. <laughs> um, and oh, uh, and, and the, the smiles on people's faces when they saw her. And my wife had had never been to a convention before, um, and she came out of it thinking, "What a wonderful, positive place!" Yeah. You know, um, people, all the cosplayers, and like the amazing, and people are just there to bring joy to people, yeah. uh, especially to children. Um, and uh, it's um, it, 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 and that's wonderful. And she was really blown away by that. And I was like. Well, and and that was from a mixed sci-fi card. I mean, it's, a celebration right. is even more like a family of hundreds of thousands of people. But like, it is this kind of close-knit family. And yes, we squabble, and yes, we yes. don't always agree. <laughs> but um, but there's a lot of love there, and um, it feels very special to be to be part of that. Utterly random guy <laughs> in the chat is asking, what was the difficult part doing this film? Hello, utterly random guy. Um, most difficult part, um, probably just the, con- uh, the conditions. I think, um, you know, I-, I was like a kid at Christmas shooting this movie because I was shooting a Star Wars movie. You know, yeah. if I never get to shoot a proper Star Wars movie, like I will go to my grave. You have having this. done this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I enjoyed it immensely, but I think the challenges were like the heat, um, people, as I say, the, there was sickness and illness. So, um, for example, shooting that whole sequence that we were just talking about with the lightsaber and that confrontation, um, uh, I had to give Marie the day off because she was sick and mm. I needed her at her best. Yeah. And even though she wanted to come on set, I was like, look, you know, all we have at the end of this, what we take home, is, is your performance. So if, if you know if I can't if we can't find that, it's not going to be to the level it needs to be because you're just dragging yourself on set and you're not well. That's going to hurt the film. So I took I give it a day off um, to rest, and then thought, well, I don't actually have that luxury on my schedule. So I had to figure out creative ways of shooting that scene without Marie. So um, if, if you watch that scene, if it's not her close up, it's not her. Um, it's someone else. It's someone dressed up in her costume. It's, oh, it's some I did not get it, that yeah. at all. So that kudos. Uh, <laughs> it, it's crazy. And, um, and no CG, really. I think we changed the hair color of somebody. Um, but that's it, you know. And, wow. and, and that was the hard thing was uh, having to work on our toes. But then it did open up really interesting uh, possibilities and ways of shooting things that I hadn't really thought of because you're kind of forced Mm. to be creative. Um, So, you know, so you kind of look at the positives of that, but it's certainly certainly stressful having to rewrite the schedule every night, um, you know, on very little sleep and then get back into that heat, which uh, as the random guy was, say that the height was 50 degrees Celsius. So, or whatever that is in Fahrenheit, that was that was the hottest hot. it got. Oh wow! Um, Ungodly hot. Here's uh, to you and you the know that you. was see and you're, in, and you're in the desert. You know it's not you know this was the desert. You know we were driving hours to get to locations. Um, you know so um, it, it was <laughs> it was certainly challenging. But you know we all were committed to deliver this film on a kind of epic scale. Um, and, uh, and make it look like a Star Wars movie. And to do that, we needed to, you know, go big. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, make it happen. We have a very important question that was posed to us from our, our subscribers. It is from our dear, dear moderator who has been with us since practically the very beginning, Yova. They ask you, Phil... Are you a Raylo? <laughs> and, uh, is, is this where you can pull the plug if I ask? Yeah. 
Oh, are you there, Phil? Are you, are you there? Sorry, we lost him. Oh, uh, John, we lost him. All I will say is I am a romantic at heart, okay? Yeah. I mean, seeing this film is... Is kind of a yes. is, is kind of a love story in a way, mm -hmm. um, and um, I think uh, the Last Jedi was electrifying, um, and uh, and 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 mainly because of that chemistry. Um, for me, I think it's going to be quite hard to have the happily ever after because you know of what happened to Han. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. Yes, that's my only reservation. Um, but it's, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's sort of a screwed up Romeo and Juliet, right? I mean, look at it. You know, they're from polar opposite sides. You know, told that they can't be together, and, and that's what makes it so wonderful on screen. And, and as a director, you see these actors, um, and you, you know, you can't help but try and capture that chemistry. You know, yeah. um, because my God, look at them. <laughs> right. Screen. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, do I want them to go off and have Raylo babies? Probably not. I don't know. But, um, you're but, safe here. Don't worry. Don't you're, worry. You're safe. Don't worry. It's we'll okay. protect you. Yes, we will. We have the savers, because Phil. <laughs> the thing for me is that, you know, um, I really stop myself from, from, well, a reading theories, um, and also um, coming up with my own theories, yeah. um, I, because I feel like it spoils that fun of being that kid again. Yeah, you know, if, yeah. if I'm like, right, I think Palpatine's going to be this, and I think this, and I think this. I mean, the only thing um, which, when I saw the first trailer. And we saw, you know, dark gray with the double, you know, the the, uh, the double bladed saber. I mean, I just went, oh, obviously like a force. Um, it's obviously like, you know, Luke in the cave, you know, seeing himself invade his mask. Like, it, that's why it has to be. Uh, and if and if and if she is dark gray, and she does have that lightsaber. I'm gonna find that hard. Uh, I have to admit, I'm gonna find it hard. Um, but. Um, but again, I like I not I, I I try not to think about it because I want to be surprised. Yeah, right. And yeah. I loved about the last Jedi. You know, the amount of times I turned to my friend in the in in the theatre watching it, just going, "Holy, like, what? Where is this film going?" <laughs> yes. You know? Yes. And and I feel that surprise for an audience happens once, right? Yes. You know, and then everything else is, you know, a kind of retroactive look at that surprise. So even some of the haters, you know, uh, of Last Jedi, um, you know, I I enjoy the surprise, you know, um, and uh, and that's what I go to the cinema for. Right. I go to be escape to go take take to another place to surprise me, to move me. I don't want to see what i've seen i don't want to i don't want the predictable to happen i don't want to sit here and read theories and sit there and wait for a tick box to happen when i when i see the film because i want to be that kid again when i watch it so i sort of try and avoid those um and go where the filmmaker wants to take us and i and i you know i know look look the last day i was brave um but that's what i needed to be you know, and I, and I love the film, and I've seen it countless times. Um, and um, but then, what what film hasn't had? You know, we we've all sort of centered on the Last Jedi as this this film that's divided us. But like, has it? I mean, you know, like when think of the prequel trilogy, think of the originals. You know, people were sniffy about Empire Strikes Back when it first came out. <laughs> you know, and look at it now. So. It's, uh, I, I try not to pay that much attention. Uh, yes, we're all fanboy to um, you know to haters, and uh, I I <laughs> I did once turn somebody at Star Wars Celebration. Uh, I was sat in the uh, in a in a crowd, and there was a guy. Uh, I was wearing my Last Jedi T-shirt, and we got talking, um, and uh, I managed to convince him that he was wrong. 
uh, which was which was fun. <laughs> but I don't I don't do it very often. And, <laughs> and uh, my mum basically says, if I if you don't have anything to, good nice to say, don't say it at all. Um, so uh, I, I feel like that's my motto to live by on on, on social media. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with opinion, obviously, and there's nothing. And I love the passion. Yeah. And I know for origins, I know people are gonna. I know there's going to be a whole section of people that don't like it because they're expecting, you know, a film like Darth Maul Apprentice, which is yes. a whole lightsaber fight. Yeah. You know, it's not that film. No, uh, it's not. And and, uh, and if, you, if that's not your cup of tea, then fine. Um, but uh, but that's not the film I set out to make. So, you know, um, uh, so and, that, and that's and that's what we didn't, and that's how I approached Star Wars. So I'm going into Rise of Skywalker as an open book, um, as that 12 year old again going, come on, take me on this journey. And I'm just going to cry, laugh, be surprised. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to have a great time. You know, um, I can't think of what they, um, couldn't do or what they, I can't think what they can do. Sorry. That's going to make me hate it, you know, cause I love Star Wars. I absolutely love it. You know, I don't love everything, but I love it. You know, so and my God, this is a hard, um, hard film for JJ to pull off, you know, um, mm-hmm. and um, it's um, it, yeah, it's, it's a hard one. It's a very hard one. How do you resolve the saga? Um, and, you know, the question and I'll, I'll, this is an open ended question. I want to the chat. But like, do you think Palpatine would be back if Snoke didn't go? You know, and do you think we, by bringing Palpatine back, we actually do have the opportunity to close off this whole saga? Do you think that wouldn't have happened? Um, do you think that would have happened if Last Jedi was different? Do you know what I mean? So it's like, as much as you're like, oh, Snoke, who is he? Well, you know, we didn't get enough of a shot. I'm like, yeah, but look what that inspired, you know? Yeah. Um, and everyone's loving that Palps is back. You know, I don't know anyone that said they don't like it. So, um, uh, so, <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so that, that's a positive thing from my point of view. Well, Phil, thank you so much for joining us. Is there any information about Star Wars Origins that you would um, like to, like to, uh, Sorry, uh, <laughs> like to announce here on this live stream, I just lost words. Forgive me. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm doing the same. Um, I'm throwing so, the link to the uh, your YouTube channel great. in right now. The chat. Thank you. Yep. So yeah, so um, if you um, basically the easiest thing to do is hit subscribe on that, and then you'll be notified. And we're gonna, we're going to do a live chat launch um, tomorrow. Um, so you can join us for the kind of premiere and watch it with us, which I think would be really, really, really good fun. Um, and um, it's, uh, I, I just hope you guys enjoy it because we've done something different mm-hmm. and um, and it's been really fun how much you guys have embraced the trailer. Uh, it's, the comments on that trailer are wonderful. You know, people's theories um, about, it, it, it's blown people's minds how it's set in World War Two. Uh, thank you, Amy. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, Sky. Um, it's um, it, it, it it's um, oh, I've lost my train of thought again. I, I apologize. The comments you know, and inspiring. Oh, the people. comments. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, because people have all these theories uh, about how it's World War Two, but how it's origins, but how it's you know, but how is it Star Wars, but how is it set on Earth, you know. And it's been great reading them. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, nobody's figured it out yet, which is good fun. Um, because that was, that was nerve wracking. Um, but, um, but it's, it, it, we've done something different and hopefully you guys, if you like it, um, please, and I'm saying all the obvious stuff that you always hear, but please, please do share it because, mm-hmm. um, we've made this for love, uh, you know, uh, we we spent a heck of a lot of money and a heck of a lot of time um, on this film for the fandom, you know. And um, uh, and the more people share it, the more the, the 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 closer I get to doing a cool 
official Star Wars film. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, well, what uh, a film to give them. What well, a film I mean, to be a calling card, honestly. I, I, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, My Drone Pro is in the chat. Um, that's Neil, who got the uh, crazy IV drip. He's the uh, drone um, uh, operator on the film so he's he's in the oh, chat oh hi Hello. my drone pro kudos <laughs> yeah. kudos uh, some cool shot. <laughs> um and uh yeah he's uh and maybe maybe neo just put in the chat while you're talking about the tattoo because that, that's really fun we've got this little bet on <laughs> um uh but uh yeah if you can um if you can embrace it and share it uh that'd be absolutely wonderful and and um i just can't wait to hear what you guys think like it's been in my head for so many years mm-hmm. um and now it's gonna be finally out there um uh today now it's on, it, it, in, in uh it's in 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 the uk now it's the it's the uh 12th of december so it's here it's today um it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be crazy but uh but yeah do, do share it and uh and yeah just let us know what you think I'm sorry, Phil. What was that last sentence? I I didn't get to hear you. Oh, so I was just saying, um, you know, just just please do share it and let, let us know um, what you think about the film, and um, you know, and if you, I, it's one of those films. I think that even if you're not a Star Wars fan, I think you can enjoy it. So, yeah. um, and because uh, I know, because we, we we did, you know, we tested it with a few audiences that weren't Star Wars fans. Um, it was amazing, the power of Star Wars. Oh. How many references they actually got, even though yeah. they like. I think I've seen it. I might have seen that one. Yeah, you know, they're not real fans, but they enjoyed the film, and that's wonderful because that is wonderful. You know, yeah. a sound a film that exists in its own right. You know, um, and didn't have that usual sort of fan film baggage. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and uh, hopefully, yeah. So yeah. So Neil just said. If we don't get to 10 million views, he's going to tattoo the logo on his butt. Um, <laughs> so, like, help this man. And, and, help and, this he's, man and he's serious. He's totally serious. So, uh, yeah. So, if you want to avoid that, we need to, uh, need to share it. With time. him for life. With <laughs> yeah. him for life. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm always, almost just wanting to get the tattoo, but um, it would be nice if people can embrace it. Um, and uh, enjoy the film. Yes, perfect. So, We're so glad you you reached out to us, and it's been it's been a pleasure sharing the the trailer and live streaming with you right now. It's thank awesome. you again. Yeah, thanks for your support, and obviously your subscriber support, and the people in the chat and stuff. This is this is a lot of fun, and um, yeah, and, and have me back. <laughs> I'll come back and talk Raylo with you. Um, <laughs> John Deal. Yes. Done. We'll, we'll we'll just, do we it. will pencil you in after Tross, and it's That'll just going to be nothing but live streams. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Done. There. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. I know, and uh, yeah, obviously, if you're if you're ever at a celebration, that'll be fun yeah. to uh, to to say hello in person. Absolutely. We've met so many amazing people in this this year and a half that we've been a, a channel and. It's still just mind blowing yeah. how how wonderful uh, this community has been. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. So yeah. thank you so much, Phil. Stay on the line with us. We're going to end this chat and yeah, M, take it away. Well, um, we also will have the link to Star Wars Origins and any of uh, Phil Hawkins' social media down below once this live stream mm-hmm. is published. And as far as us, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Patreon. And Phil, I believe they can find you on Twitter and Instagram. Are there any other uh, social media sites that they can find and discuss the movie with you? So, yeah, so uh, the film's got its own uh, sort of Instagram, which is at, at Star Wars Origins. Um, and, um, or is it at Origins Film? God. That, that's how tiny I am. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it. It's so dark just, forty something by you. It's bless okay. your heart. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm on uh, Twitter, Instagram as Phil M Blog. I just said hello in the chat there, so that's like my channel. 
Um, if you're interested in the deep dive into the making of it, um, I'm releasing a series of um, like a little documentary series um, that's going to go into you know very specific parts of the film. So there's like five, uh, excuse me, five or six episodes on there already, and there's a lot more to come. So you can have a look at that as well. Um, and yeah, just uh, hit, hit up the uh, Star Wars Origins channel, uh, subscribe, and um, and yeah, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow or today for me. Yeah. Uh, we can have a chat uh, about what you think of the film. Perfect. Again, thank you so much, Phil. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. thank you to everyone who participated in making Star Wars Origins. It's, I'm sure, the, the work and the hours and the creative um, the creative brain work that was done. We'll, we will never fully grasp the sacrifice and the joy of making <laughs> this film. So um, just... We hope you guys just profit a whole lot and this will open doors for you. So um, for Girls with Sabres, for Phil, for Luthien and I, thank you so much for joining us in this live stream. Um, may the force be with you all and peace, love, and Raylo. <laughs> Goodbye. Say, I'm so low. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Phil, we just have to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>